a young man who built his first home at the age of 17. His name is Fred Trump. He's built a few other things since then. Chairman of the board of the Trump Organization. He knew, even as a youngster, that he wanted to work with his hands. So he took courses at night in plan reading and estimating and carpentry while he going to high school and working in a local fruit store during the day. He was hired as a carpenter's helper for a building firm. And his skills quickly put him in demand. And within a short time, he had not one, not two, not three, but four jobs. In 1923, he built that first home and sold it, and then he began to build more. Higher price dwellings in Queens followed, and then the big time, Brooklyn. <laughs> in 1949, Trump began work on the first of the large apartment complexes his company now owns. The largest project, Trump Village, was a $60 million complex housing more than 4,000 families. Having developed several highly visible Manhattan structures, including Trump Tower and the Grand Hyatt Hotel, today, the Trump Organization, a billion dollar New York real estate dynasty, employs 600 people to oversee the firm's holdings in Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island, which just goes to show you what will happen when you study carpentry in high school. The Horatio Alger Award will be presented by 1977 awardee, Mrs. Ruth Peel. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Can we put that here? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Dr. and Mrs. Peel, fellow honorees, ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed one of the high points of my life, to receive the prestigious Horatia Alger Award. Students have grown, have come to me and said, what is the secret of your success? Tell me so I can make it happen. I tell them there is no secret. There are just two things. One, you must like what you do, you must pick out the right business or profession. You must learn all about it, learn everything there is to know about it, so you become enthusiastic about it. Nine out of ten people don't like what they do, and in not liking what they do, they lose enthusiasm and go from job to job, and ultimately becoming nothing. You must really feel what you are going into and make sure it's what you want the rest of your life. Now, let's see, I'll catch up with this. I put most of it when they said three minutes, I put half of it in the waste paper basket. Uh, I used to watch liking what you do and picking the right business or profession and staying with it. I used to watch other successful people and that did good and that did bad. And I followed the good qualities that they had to perfect myself. Shakespeare said, never follow an empty wagon up here, never follow an empty wagon because nothing ever falls off. <laughs> Remember, you have to find your spark in life. Because in each and every one of us, there's a tank full of gas, and they call it enthusiasm fuel. And only you can ignite it. I remember 70 years ago, my first job, we won't talk about carpenter's helper, when I carried rafters on my shoulder, long before that. 70 years ago, I was about 10 years of age, riding on a bicycle with a big wire basket in the front, delivering orders for a butcher. I liked that job, and I liked every job I've had since then, and I've been enthusiastic about all these job opportunities. I do not underestimate in all of this how important it has been to have had the love and support of my wonderful wife, Mary,
who, who today is celebrating her birthday. And we've been married close to 50 years, within six months, and that's both our first marriages. <laughs> and also, I've had the love and support of our wonderful children who are here tonight, and they're all successful, and our daughters-in-law. Would they kindly stand for just a moment, please? Mary, would you get up? Great. The award, the award this evening, I extend to Dr. and Mrs. Peel and to the Horatio Alger Foundation a most profound thanks. Thank you very much. And may God bless you all.